As I continue my journey as a creator, one thing has become apparent to me. My back is getting destroyed from all of the gear that I carry when I travel. And it's not surprising, I'm an FPV pilot, a regular drone pilot, and I take photos and videos. And then I have to edit them all often on the go. So whenever an opportunity presents itself to shrink any part of my kit and not lose any performance, that part is really important. I immediately jump on it. So when Apple was like, hey, do you want an iPad Pro with the M chips inside to edit your videos while you travel? I was like, is that even possible? The M series iPad Pros are incredibly light and way smaller than my MacBook Pro. So today we're gonna walk through my exact professional video editing workflow that I use while on the go while just using an iPad Pro. Now, if you can, I would highly recommend you get the Magic Keyboard because it will make your job a lot easier. And if you can't afford that, then try and get the Apple Pencil too, if possible for those micro adjustments. It does help a ton, but I do want any who's watching this video to be able to follow along today so I'm not gonna use the magic keyboard I'm gonna get rid of that I'm just gonna be using the Apple pencil too but anything I do with the pencil you can do with your finger I just prefer the feel of the pencil and how accurate I can get but again everything I do today you can do just using your finger and an iPad Pro all right so the first thing you want to do is you want to grab your SSD or your memory card reader or wherever the file that you want to edit is now a lot of people don't know this but the iPad and the iPad Pros have their own file management systems or their own finder just like the MacBook and this makes them a lot more usable as a professional device. Next up you want to open up DaVinci Resolve and you want to click this little home icon to create a new project. Now I've already gone ahead and done this so I'm just going to hit cancel and my project is already ready to go. Next up you want to click the little gear icon to jump into the settings and here you can change your timeline resolution and your frame rate. Now generally for social media reels I'll go 10 80 whether I'm doing vertical resolution or not and I'll change my frame rate to 30 frames per second which is the standard for social media. Next up I'll head into my color management and you want to change your timeline color space and your output color space to Rec 709A and this is pretty much the standard for any social handheld devices like your phones or your iPads. Once we have our project set up, then we're going to head back into DaVinci, head into the cut tab and click on import media. Here you can select whatever clip you want to edit from your device or your source location. Now generally you're going to get that change frame rate pop up. You always want to click don't change. After that, just simply drag your clip onto your timeline. Now this is a heavy 4K clip from a DJI Mavic 3 Pro. So that was a pretty quick import. Then I'll head into my inspector and I'll play around with the zoom just to mess with the composition of my project, just making sure I'm happy with everything. And then I'll scrub through the timeline and use the cut tool to basically trim down the fat anywhere I feel like the clip is not really important. And then I'll scrub through once again to make sure that I'm just happy with everything. For this project, I changed my mind and I decided to go back and into the settings and change it to use vertical resolution. And that's just because I figured that I didn't want to make people turn their phones. And now we're going to head into the color tab and this is really where the magic happens. Now I generally close everything in the top left area and shrink the video section just so I can focus on the nose area because that's where I'm going to be doing most of my work. Now if you click that little rhombus icon you can go ahead and add some nodes. I generally like to add up five nodes and then relabel all of them. You can open up this right click menu by either holding down your finger or an apple pencil for about a second. Now I'm not going to make you guys watch me relabel all of these nodes but basically I label them from left to right the first and last one being cst nodes then you have a primaries node a curves node and the fourth node is kind of just like a free node to use for whatever then i'll go ahead and open up my effects panel and look for an effect called color space transform and this is the most important step in the color grading process i'll drag the color space transform effect onto the first node and the very last node as you can see, I'm not the best at dragging with the Apple Pencil. Then I'll head into my first node and I'll go ahead and set this up. So for my input color space and my input gamma, I know that I filmed this with the DJI Mavic 3 Pro. So I'm going to go ahead and select DJI D gamut for my input color space. And then for my input gamma, I'm going to go ahead and select DJI D log. Now for my output color space, and this is really important, I'm going to go ahead and switch to DaVinci wide gamut. And then for my output gamma, I'm going to switch to 
and just give me a second to scroll here, DaVinci Intermediate. Now this is gonna set me up for a great color grade because as I go to my last node, I now know that my input color space, which I just selected in my first node, is DaVinci Y Gamut. And then for the input gamma, same thing, we're gonna pick DaVinci Intermediate. Now because we already set up our timeline correctly in the settings, this step is not really necessary. I'm just kind of paranoid when it comes to these things. So I go ahead and change my output color space and my output gamma to Rec 709 and Rec 709A. Now again, if you've set up your project correctly, you don't need to do this. Now that we've set up our base, we're gonna head into our primaries node, and this is where I play around with the primaries color wheels, and this sort of shows you how to get there. Now, generally here, I like to change my temperature, and I'm going for a super warm, sort of glowy desert vibe, so I'm gonna raise my temperature a ton, and I'm also gonna add a lot of contrast to the scene. Now again, this is all subjective, and you can literally do anything you want here, but in the primaries node, you really just wanna play around with your color wheels as well as your temperature. So I go ahead and also add some tint um, or some magenta into the tint. I play around with my shadows here and the exposure, adding a little bit of lift and then coming back to add some more temperature, uh, warming up the scene. And again, just playing around with the tint, making sure that I'm happy with how the image is looking. Once I'm all set with my primaries, I'll head into my curves node. And this is for me, the most important node when it comes to the actual color grading process. I'll jump into my custom curves and the first thing I do is I unlink them. And then I sort of flatten out my image by raising my blacks and my whites. And then I'll just play around with the curve uh, making sort of a gentle S curve. And again, this is all up to your personal taste and your personal preference. I personally like a contrasty image that sort of still reveals all of the detail in the shadow. So this is just what I like to do. And then I head into the individual color channels. So the red, green, and blue, and I just play around with the highlights and shadow ends, basically seeing what effect each color is going to have. So I do make slight modifications to each color channel. And again, this is not necessary by any means. This all comes down to personal taste. But lately I've been really into dialing my colors and sort of calibrating exactly how I want my look to be. Once I'm done with the custom curves, I'll head into the hue versus saturation curves. Now DaVinci has this awesome feature of showing you what colors are existing in an image. So this is just as an, as an example, but you could completely desaturate your greens and your blues here if you really wanted to. Again, those colors don't exist in this image. Then I head over into my hue versus hue. And then here again, as you can see, all the information is sort of in the reds and the orange. Is. And here I'll really dial in what color I'm going for in my image. And so I'm just going to go ahead and make some micro adjustments here on the hue curve until I'm satisfied with what I'm looking at. Then I head into the hue and the luminance curve. And over here, I'm just going to play around with the luminance again, just in the oranges to see how it's affecting the image. And I decided that I kind of wanted to raise the luminance to add to that glowy desert vibe that I was going for. And a lot of the color grading process just comes down to you playing around with things. So you'll notice that I jump back into my primaries node here to play around with the temperature once again. And then I go ahead and sort of try and affect the offset, but I'm not happy with that. So I go ahead and reset it. Now, after this process, I generally head into my FX or my LUT free node. And here I'll add a LUT for a specific type of look. Now, DaVinci has a bunch of awesome built-in LUTs, but lately you'll be surprised to know that I actually haven't been using any LUTs at all because I've been really dialing in my color grading process in that curves node to get the exact colors that I'm looking for. Once I'm happy with the look of my image, I'll actually go in and add an additional node after the color space transform. And then I'll add some kind of effect. Now, Glow is an awesome effect that's free in DaVinci Resolve, so you don't need the full version. So I really like to drop Glow in at the end, and then I'll play around with the spread and the shine threshold slider specifically until I'm happy with a look that I get. I'll generally turn the glow effect on and off a bunch of times while doing this just to make sure that I'm happy with the before and after. And for this project, I actually changed my mind and turned off vertical resolution because there was a ton of the image that was missing and I felt like that glow effect made it look super dreamy. Finally, once you're done with all of your edits, you just want to go ahead and export at the top. Now, generally, I'm pretty happy with the H.264 results on the iPad Pros. I go ahead and hit export and then you just want to select your destination and name it whatever you want. It's really that simple. You go ahead and hit save in the top right corner. 
and then the iPad Pro will start exporting. Now again, it's exporting in, dot, in H.264 and this is a 5K file from the DJI Mavic 3 Pro. So this is real time rendering. So honestly, I was really impressed with the speeds on the M series iPad Pros and they're super fast. And that's it. That's my entire process for how I edit professional looking reels and videos for social media while on the go just using my iPad Pro. So hopefully that helps you out and you learn something new. Now, I know this process can seem daunting and a little bit long because the video was kind of long, but that's just because I'm explaining to you sort of every single thing that's going through my mind while I do it. Once you get into the process and start doing it yourself, it becomes second nature. And trust me, you'll be pumping out videos every single day while traveling and never miss a posting date again. Anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you guys learned something. I'll see you in the next one. And until then, keep creating.